ಮಾತ್ರ ದಿಕ್ಕಾಲಿ ಅನಬಚ್ಛಿನ್ನ ಅನಂತ ಚಿನ್ಮಾತ್ರ ಮೂರ್ತ ಸ್ವಾನುಭೂತಿ ಏಕಮಾನಾಯ ನಮ ಶಾಂತಾಯ ತೇಜಸಿ ಐ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ದ ವನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ who is tranquil and beyond all limitations who is the embodiment of infinite consciousness and can be known only through one's own experience friends today mainly we will be discussing when the guru is telling his disciple guru vashishta is instructing his disciple sri ramachandra and the statement or the instruction is very unique he said this entire visible universe is verily brahman this entire universe is verily brahman the usually we always differ see here we have given a barricade the white place you are not supposed to go without bathing it because this is a holy place but outside here of course you can come so we are differentiating holy and this is not so holy so by that way it is so you can come you can see it but that is a holy place you cannot but here in the brahman means everywhere everything everything and there are no question of that superiority inferiority or the seen or purity nothing like that to shami vivekananda that's why he say it is a seen to call a man seener a tradition that is there in the christian tradition that i am seener that's why i am suffering but the swam vedanta they will never say that hinduism there are different schools one group will say oh you are sinner you are committing mistakes you will be suffering you will go to hell that is there but the vedanta will never say that why because the vedanta believes that everything is nothing but the same consciousness in different names different forms different figures so that, that is the reason when the vashishta is the from the ultimate point of view he is mentioning this entire visible universe is verily brahman srishti nama brahma rupe satchidananda vastuni and the bakya sudha another book you know in different uh, the writers and after their realization they are expressing their views in different way but they are telling the same thing bakya sudha another book and his writer is mentioning that srishti nama brahma rupe satchidananda srishti nama srishti means this creation this creation that you see in the creation we see the birds the plants the trees the animals the reptiles the human being everything everything and what is that brahma rupe it is brahman they have given a name it is very difficult to give a name the moment you name something you are giving a, a limitation into that but what to do without the name we won't be able to understand it so that's why they say brahman what is that brahman all pervading consciousness ever expanding expanding when i am telling you you are listening Uh, to some extent we try to imagine it must be because many of us we have seen how the the our space the world is expanding so by it must be something like that 
you know, it is everything. That imagination is really, really very difficult. And that is the reason the Hindus, they introduced duality. They say, this is your God. Come and pray and cry and sing and offer your food. And then you will feel how this is like me. I also eat, God also eats. And I am going to sleep, God will also go to sleep. Night 8.30, they will close it. And not only that, if it is cold, they will put a, a that uh, blanket also on the God. Though it is a picture, but God will be feeling cold. So all that feeling is there. And that is so easy for us to understand. And slowly, slowly, we can understand the God I am serving outside, it is inside. The God I am hating outside, that is inside. Everything, and that is the ultimate condition of a spiritual mind. So each, every step are true. That's why Swami Vivekananda said, we are not traveling from error to truth. He puts that words in so beautiful way. We are not traveling from error to truth. We are traveling from lower truth to higher truth. Now a child comes over here and he sees all these things and then he goes and tells his friends, we saw this, we saw that. His description, of course it is true. And a person will come with all experience, he will come and observe and when he is writing, his experience will be different. But the child, whatever he is telling, it is also true. So lower truth to higher truth, when they say the God is there before me in this form, it is true. And they will say, no, 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 God cannot be different than these. There comes the problem. When they say that God must be this and not anything else, that is his problem and he is creating the problem. The God is not creating. The human narrow mind and egoistic mind and they go on fighting like that. We should not accept that as a religion. That is the viewpoint of that individual person. That is his problem. But the God can be in any form. Can be in any form. Anywhere. So that is the way it says Srishti Nama. All this creation that we see. Brahma Rupe. It is only the Brahman, Satchidananda Bastuni. Now, Sat, Chit, Ananda. So they say two things. One is Brahman. Another, Sat, Chit, Ananda. And third, they say, it is Atman. The so different words they have used, but the same thing. Sat means existence. Chit, knowledge. Ananda, bliss. And that's why we feel each and every being, they like to survive, they like to live. No one wants to die. Where from this quality came? It must be from the beginning. So Sat, that means that my creator is also eternal. See how they are keeping it in this way. The statement that is they are giving, my creator is eternal. Why? I also like to be eternal. I also like to leave. And some of the people, rich people and influential people in the society, they will create their huge the images and they will put here and there. In India it is so much. In America it is not that much. And sometimes only very famous person, and like the Lincoln, this park, his statue is there. In India, wherever you go, so many statues. People don't know who is that. Then you have to go and read the name, then only. But they like to give the statues all the way. Why? I am surviving. But Jesus is surviving. Lord Buddha is surviving. How? Not physically, but their ideas. They live that life. That is called immortality. You will never die. The world will go on changing. But all these great personalities will always remain over there. Sometimes some people will come, they will break that images, like that happened in the Middle East. But Buddha will survive. 
whether you kill Buddha and statue and break the statue, destroy the temple, it doesn't matter. It will, because it's an idea. And this idea, the highest idea is, I am that. But to reach over there, we have to prepare our mind, slowly, slowly. What is the preparation? We are so much attached to this body. So much attached to this body. And that is the reason to come out of this body. I'm living in this body, but at the same time I'm thinking, I'm, I, I'm not this body. There was one saint. He used to lie down uh, on a, in, inside a cave. Ants will come. And they will be just sometimes cutting slow, the ants as they do. And he will be just looking, oh, this is not my body. Something else they are doing. So by that way, they are taking out the mind out of the body. There was a direct disciple of Swami Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. He had a carbuncle at the back. And it has to be operated. But there was no anesthesia. The doctor told Swamiji it would be too, too painful. You won't be able to bear. So don't do this. I won't be able to operate. So no problem. Give me five minutes time. Then do it. Then he lied down and took out his mind and said, now you can do it. And he really did that. There was no problem. He took out that mind. When I go to my dentist, I try that. But some, <laughs> but it is difficult. So <laughs> but if you try to take out the mind out of your body, your body, you will be, so that's why the one type of meditation is go and stand before a mirror, look at yourself, lie down, and imagine that you are coming out of your body, watching your body. See your face, your eyes, your whole, all limbs, and there is somebody else, as if. That's a great meditation. You are coming out of your body, because the attachment with the body is so much so. So it says, Brahman is often compares a vast ocean. They are saying that you should not do that. Vast sky. But the main difference is the Brahman is conscious. The sky and the ocean, they are not conscious. Vashishta Muni, he continued, Nirashayatvat, Vibhutvacha, Tatha, Anasya Bhavataha Brahma Vyamo Nabedasti Chaitanam Brahmana Adhikam. He says from the 10th uh, chapter, the 14th verse we are reading, Nirangshatvat. What is that Nirangshatvat? No Angsha. No Angsha Nirangsha. Angsha means part. No Angsha. This Brahman is not having any part. My hand, my feet, my ear, are different parts are there. If the amputated, the hand is amputated, the person survives. Brahman is not like that. So when they are talking about the one, that one is completely different than the conception of other philosophy. There are other philosophies are also telling that it is one. La ilaha illa laha. There is also one. That means in the Muslim world they say it is one. But when we say it is one, what type of one? Then they will say, okay, okay, it must be like this. There are all different trees, only except one special tree that is a mango tree. Of all that the, in the jungle, only one mango tree. It is like this? No, it is not like that. Well, is it like that? The one person, and there is no other one, is it like that? No. Because the person is also having the parts, Brahman having no parts. It is completely one and without any second. So they always say it is one without second. Without second, that conception, oh, that means it is not two, one. So that is the way they will understand. Otherwise, one young boy came and announced to his father, 
father was an illiterate person. So he said, father, I have become fast in my class. Who oh, is he? So grand, you have become fast. How many students were there? Not more than two. No, there is no two. Now he said, not more. He, there was no two. That means he was the only person in that class. And he has stood fast. So he is declaring in such a way, his father got confused. Oh, that's a no two, but one. Anyway, you are fast. Okay, no problem. But he is the only. So by that way, he is doing. Then I saw the other day, very funny way he, the child, the young boy brought his mark sheet. And the father told, bring me to me. He said, I can give you the mark sheet, but you must maintain the social distance. That means the father should not beat him. There is all bad marks are coming. <laughs> So you must maintain the social distance. So like this it goes on. The one is complete one, not two. And there is no difference between Brahman and space. But the space is not conscious. Brahman is conscious. Now he is giving the story, telling the story of the Prahlada. Well, many of you know the story of the Prahlada. The last class we discussed about the Bali. Now the Prahlada. Prahlada is usually known as a devotee, but he was a gani too. What is the devotee? Dualist. The God is there, I am there. That's my devotion. But what is the gani? God and me are one. So that is called gani. Jesus is a great devotee and he prayed, prayed and prayed. But the same this Jesus, if you have noticed, said, I and my father in heaven are one. It is not two. We have installed a statue of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, the tallest statue till now, in the Chicago, in that uh, our home of harmony. If you notice, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he is showing this two finger like this. And then the left hand is holding like this. Why this two finger? That means Paramatma and Jivatma, God, God and the devotee, there are two. As long as two, there is problem. Because I go to God and God was, oh, you have come, very good. Then God turns to somebody else and say, oh, you have also come. Then jealousy come. Why the God should give attention to him or her? God should be always with me. The duality means always differences will be there. Even in the company of God also it will be. That's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, if you are having one, these two becoming one, then within your heart you are filled with joy. So the left hand that is holding like this, as if the whole joy is within your heart. The two, always misery. One, always joy. Now how will you become one? by understanding. Here it says, the, when the Lord appeared before him, that young boy, he was meditating, he was praying, and Lord Vishnu, Vishnu appeared before him, and he said, well, in, in Indian, all the stories, you will always find the gods, very quickly they are coming and asking, oh, ask for a boon. But you have to be very careful for asking the boon. Otherwise, it is very difficult. So Swami Vivekananda's that story, that if you read that story, one should know what to ask, what to pray, otherwise it will be very difficult. Then one person was having a, you know, a short nose and he, uh, people used to call different names and he was not at all happy. Unfortunately, the lady he married was also having the same problem. There's no almost flat nose. The both of them were not at all happy. Then this man went to this person, that person. Then one gentleman told, hey, this no one can help, only God can. So he went to the jungle and started praying to God. Sincerely he was praying. And because of his sincere prayer, God appeared before him and asked, I will give you three boons, but careful, my boy, be very careful. Three boons I will give you. Asking for one, I will give you three. Now these three, the dice as I am giving you, go back and throw, and whatever you will ask, that will be fulfilled. 
excited he went back to his house and he called his wife and said now we are going to solve our problem and what is that problem that that we are going to get good noses the wife was very intelligent she told why we are bothering about the noses ask for money if we are rich people no one will be able to tell us anything even our flat noses also people will praise the ask for money so they had a very good quarrel and after that that men, gentleman became very angry and he told god has given me this not to you so i am going to ask for and he threw the three dice and asked nose oh god give me good nose and both of us and both of them were having noses everywhere now they prayed for the nose and the noses came everywhere all over the body now one nose is so difficult to maintain when you are in cold and now so many noses what will happen so they understood it will be very and so looking so ugly also then the second time the wife started crying what to do then he no 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 i have another two then he threw another and said please remove the noses the old flat nose that they were having that also gone because he was not careful about asking remove the noses the old nose also gone and it was so ugly then there's okay now i have understood we must pray for the wealth then the wife said no don't do that because the very ugly face that we are having now and when the people will suddenly see that we are rich and they will come to know that we got three bones from the god and we are so full that we could not utilize it rather we have lost our old nose also rather be as it is so people would ask any question so the ultimately both of them pray for the old flat noses on the proper places so after all this they were so when we are praying to god that is also very difficult and if we pray for deep there are so many stories are like that and here it says you must be very careful prallad was very careful and the, he when the god appeared before him and asked hey what type of prayer that you have i will give you that boon then lord he is asking bless me so that i can consider all is the limitless limitless and infinite i can consider you can and can understand limitless and infinite is the brahman it is so difficult to realize so obviously give me that boon and the lord said i give you the blessings o prahlada may you be endowed with the spirit of inquiry till you realize brahman now here if you go to god and ask for something immediately they grant your prayer but if you go for gyana knowledge for the infinite brahman then the god will say no you have to get it you have to achieve it you have to prepare yourself otherwise you won't understand example the young boy narendra nath who became vivekananda afterwards the to him bhagavan sri ramakrishna said you know narin everything that you see is nothing but the brahman the consciousness this image of the goddess kali and this building the temple that you see and that lady sitting over there and the river the sky the everything is nothing but consciousness including the utensils that are used for puja this young boy came back and he sat with another person he was they were having a good chat look at this old man and he is telling everything is nothing but the god including those utensils and they were having a good laugh bhagwan sri ramakrishna came and touched him just by touch he gave that knowledge <clears throat> three days and three nights this young man he saw everything is nothing but consciousness he the food the plate everything is nothing but consciousness who is going to eat what when he was traveling on the street calcutta street when the cars are coming he won't move the car and me and the road everything is consciousness 
Nothing is going to change. Three days and three nights this happened. Then afterwards, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna withdrew that. Why? This boy was not ready to understand that. So you have to prepare yourself, otherwise it becomes a problem. Suddenly if you get some boon, and you'll be th thoroughly confused if you are not ready. So that is why the Lord said, I give you the boon that you see the oneness. No, he said, I bless you so that you develop the inquiry. Inquiry, that means, who am I? Am I this body? Some bones, some blood and some the skin and these. Am I this? No. Mine? No. The, the going on, 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 on. Ultimately, he reaches to that. Then, step by step, he has gone. He knows what is what. So, this is the reason Prahlada started his journey. He was a known devotee, but he continued to ask, Who am I? Oh, I am pure consciousness. He started telling him, I am all pervading reality. I am the reality. I am the self. I salute myself. He is telling, which is the indweller in all beings. And in the 22nd verse, it says, and it goes on in the continuing, though the present everywhere in all time, but do not realize this self because it is modification, it is I. It is everywhere, but I cannot understand because of the modification. What is that modification? I am a man, I am a woman. I am educated, I am not educated, it's called modification. Upadhi, in Sanskrit it's called Upadhi, it's all modification. In Indian names, they, the surname, the second name, they all, always say the last name, they say Upadhi. Then what is your Upadhi? Like I am a Bhattacharya, I am this Naran, I am this. So the last name is called Upadhi. Why Upadhi? It came from this. He was so and so. Almost all the Indian names are connected with God. This God or that God. They'll be all God. And then the Upadhi comes. That means the last name comes. And that differentiates. Otherwise, I was Krishna. Somebody's name will be Krishna. And nowadays in the modern times, they like to pronounce that Krishna as Krish. <laughs> Krishna is a, such a good name the God's name, but they will. Now this way they go, but they don't understand this God and the Upadhi are completely different. But this Upadhi, that I am so and so, that makes me different. The more you are, the more this thing come on you. So that is why self, the self dwells in everybody as the fragrance resides in flowers. That he is going on analyzing the pralada. The how the self is residing is like the fragrance in the air. It is there present, but you can't see. Everywhere, all everywhere you'll find that. Similarly, the consciousness is present in everything, in every being. Only thing we have to be conscious about it. That's why Swami Vivekananda said, the giver should kneel down. So when we give, we should be humble. Why? I am getting the opportunity to practice. It doesn't matter that if I am not giving $5 or $10, that person is going to die. No, they will be surviving. But by giving with great respect, I am developing the better mental condition within me. So I am helping myself. So all moralities that we practice helps us. Not that just because the law of the land, I am not doing it. But within myself, it is there. So it is all subjective. I am not going to deceive anyone or because of the law I am practicing. Nothing like that. I practice all these things, all moralities, because I know I am going to develop myself. We practice that someone are very you know, eager to practice fasting. But why fasting? 
to control the senses. I feel like eating, I feel like drinking, but no, I won't do that. I am developing the strength of my mind, controlling my senses. I feel like doing that, but I won't do that. That is the control. That this is the way, slowly, slowly, you have to prepare yourself. The Jnana Yoga, there is no teacher. There is no God. No one will be there around you to help you. The only you and you and you. So you have to go on telling yourself, the self is ever free. Though ego sense, it appears as bound. The self is ever free. But then why I am bound? Ego. Where from the ego came? Each and everyone is having ego. But what is this ego? No one knows. If you like to analyze, it will be so difficult to really express what is this ego. I. When I was not born, where was this I? When I will die, where this I will go? It's really, very really peculiar. But this I is making me mad. I cannot become friends, I cannot become these, I cannot become that because of my ego. I have decided something and I feel that is the correct thing and I must continue with that. Then ultimately nothing can be achieved. So this is the very peculiar I, the ego that takes us. And we do not know everything is nothing but the illusion. There's a beautiful story at this Vashishta is telling to Sri Ramachandra and he'll be telling the story that there was a person, he was a great scholar and one day he was praying to God and said, Oh God, can you please show me your elusive power? What is that? How? The, because I have studied the scripture, I have practiced meditation, now I can easily understand and all these things are constantly changing. I am not going to be bound by this. And I am not going to grab that. Why all people cannot do that? It is so easy to understand. All around we see people are constantly changing. That the last, yesterday only that person was fighting with me. Today he passed away. Then where? Where they are? So like this is happening all around us. Still we cannot think that oh, things are changing. Always, every moment I am thinking, I am going to survive and everything is going to be with me and it goes on and on and on. Why this? Can you please show me this illusive power? The God said, okay, let me see. And he went to bathe in the river, this person. And the moment he entered into the water, he saw completely different a uh, whole world. He saw that he has passed away. He is lying on the bed of, of the river and everything has changed. All people are crying and they are crying, oh my God, this person, he went to bathe and now he has passed away. He started thinking, am I passed away? But I just bathed. <laughs> Why, who is, who is this dead body? Oh no, it is mine. Now how come? He was wondering. Then suddenly he saw that his soul is traveling and he went to a jungle and he took birth as uh, the local person. And he was not a Brahmin, the new birth. He was not a Brahmin. He was a hunter, but very strong physically. And slowly, slowly he became the leader of that hunter's group. He married, he was having some children. And one day, when one after another something happened, all oh, they are dying, he didn't die. Of all the whole group, he was the only person. Then he was traveling. And in one place, what he, suddenly he saw a huge elephant, beautifully decorated, coming towards him. He was wondering, what, and he was a hunter, he was not afraid of the elephant. He was standing, the elephant came, and took him on, on its back. Why? The system was when the king without the hair passed away so that the elephant will go to choose a new king. And people were very happy, new king has been chosen. 
he was taken inside and he was bathed by the beautiful ladies and they were attending him. He became the king of that country. And it goes on like these one after another. Then ultimately he came out of the water. He was just under the water. He was bathing. He took the dip and all these things happened. Two lives passed. And he, when he came out of the water, maybe hardly, not even a minute, how long a person can be inside the water? So when he came out, oh my God, I am that old Brahmin. Nothing has happened around me. So the God came and told, have you seen? This is called Maya. Life after life passing like this. And in every life you are thinking that you are real, but in reality you are not. Friends, this is to be understood. When I am thinking I am educated, I am rich, and I am egoistic, hey, go away, go do this, do that. Who am I? Any moment it may change. So through the stories they always say, be very, very careful, always prayerful, always attentive that anything may happen any time. And Shankaracharya, he mentioned that three things are very, very rare. First is the human birth, manushyattam. Then the desire to be free, mumukshuttvam, desire to be free. Very few will have this desire to know, to realize God, to be free from this bondage. Very rare, very rare. If you see any game is going on in the Chicago and it's so difficult to go to Chicago. All roads will be because all people are going over there. Some good singer has come, there'll be so much of crowd. But no one will go for meditation. No. Some are interested to yoga to keep their body healthy. But for meditation, for the self, for the mind, no one is interested. That is called Maya. When you look around and say, why all people are not coming? I am alone. Bless yourself and say that I am blessed. At least this thought has come in my mind. And I am finding interest in these philosophical talks. I am getting interested to search for the soul. Very few will get it. So manushyattam, then mumukshuttam, desire to be liberated. And then Mahapurusha Samasraya, a proper guidance. Otherwise, most of the time we go in the bad hands. There will be beautiful looking people and all that. And we think, oh, this is a very good at uh, the Guru, Sadguru. I am not mentioning that present person. <laughs> he has taken that name. It is Sadguru means a very holy person, holy Guru. This Guru is completely different person. He has only love and affection and nothing else. He will never ever ask for anything and it's very very rare. Only love and nothing else. Even the parents they love the children in exchange they want something else. The Guru will never. So that is very rare. So Manushyattva, Mumukshuttva, Mahapurusha Samastraya is the human birth desire to be liberation, for liberation, and a proper guide, very difficult. And this, it says, Ashtabhakra Muni, Ashtabhakra, another great sage, is in eight different places of his body, it was broken, this Ashtabhakra. He is also mentioning this way. After the realization of the self, the realized one sees the universe as nothing but consciousness. The universe is nothing but consciousness. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he was lying in his room and one person was walking on the green grasses. Think of it. And he was sick, he was lying down in the room and someone was walking on the grasses. And Sri Ramakrishna at that moment he was connected with the all consciousness. And he said, please ask that man not to walk on that as if he is walking on my chest. I am feeling pain. The Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on the bank of the Ganga, the river, and two boatmen, they were fighting in the boat on the river. 
and someone gave a slap and the another's back, Sri Ramakrishna felt the pain. So this is the identity with each and every one. But most of the time they don't do that. But they are aware about the consciousness. So each and every one are conscious, but at the same time, we are, because of the practicality, they sometimes keep themselves aloof from that. But if this is so, then how come that we don't feel that? The Ashtavakra Muni is mentioning this, is because you are not properly connected. Intellectually, we understand that we are all same. Oh, that the ant and the elephant all are having the lives. Even the ant, so, so tiny, and the elephant so big, but they are having the lives. And when they die, their body is lying and something is missing. So that is within me too. So we are all same in that way. Me, the ant, the elephant, the bird, each and every one, we are having something very special that is called the self. And when that is not there, we are all dead, all equal. So when this we think in this way, the ego comes down. So why then I am thinking that I am somebody special? There is nothing. So Ashtavakra, he mentioned, Yasya Abhimano Mokshepi Dehopi Mamata Tatha Nabha Gyani Naiva Yogi Kevalam Dukkha Bhagavai He said, someone who is demanding that I am free, at the same time, he is having the attachment to the body, that means the ego, he is actually deceiving himself and the result is misery. So when we say that I am completely free, not just to, de to tell the other people, I have to understand that I am totally free. How? That I don't have any attachment to anything. Not that I am not leaving, I am leaving. And leaving and behaving, everything will be just normal, but there is no attachment at all. If there is a little attachment anywhere, then you are bound. In the life of the monks, the chance is, the very great chance, because they, they are not married, they don't have the family, they don't have the bank account, they don't have anything. It's so difficult to get you know, the uh, passport. They, you need a bank account, but we don't have any bank account. So what to do? Do we have to tell that this is our asrama and I am actually signing the check? By that way, you can say that I have a bank account, but personally, we, don't, we can't keep any bank account. Nothing is there. If this asrama says that you go out, then I am I'm not having anything. So that is the way you have to survive. Any moment, anything, you have to leave. That's all. So this non-attachment with the body mean, non-attachment with the ego, means I am not attached to anything of this world, but I am having that, those things. I am talking with people, going over there, everything is there, but at the same time, there is no attachment at all. But I am not a ruthless person. Ruthless person, people are also unattached. They take all their benefits and then they will throw away. It is not like that. It's a great affection is there. Love is there. Concern is there. But at the same time, they are completely detached from that. So this is the way. The true joy is in infinite. The moment you limit yourself, your joy is limited. True joy is infinite. And if you think that this is me that I should enjoy, how much you can enjoy? But when you are with people, then in Chicago, particularly this time, the summer time, they take people for that, the tour. And when so many people will be there, some are going on munching, some are going on drinking, some are chatting, and some are listening to the person who is describing this building, that building, all architectural tour is going on. And you are enjoying each and every one. 
Some children, they are playing, they are not at all interested about the architectural thing. Some people are there, they're going on, taking the photo, and not careful about the description. But the man who is there giving the description, he is going on telling what is happening, what is, and trying to uh, give it as interesting as possible. And you are enjoying each and every one. So many different type of people, so many different type of behavior, but all are enjoying in their own way. And you collect their enjoyment and enjoy that. So when you are connected with each and every one, the one who is taking the snaps and not interested in listening, he is also enjoying. And some people are going on eating, what are the foods are there, that's also enjoyment. <laughs> Though they are there, sitting in that and trying, supposed to be listening to that, but they are not. And the, only the family is there, the friends are there, so they are taking food. That is also joy. So now you connect yourself with all of them. Your joy is maximum. Just an example. And same way, somebody is happy, somebody is successful, your joy is connected with that, infinite. The more and more you are expanding, the more you are enjoying each and everything. That's why it says, Bhumai was sukham in the Chandagya Upanishad. Only two words. Bhumai was sukham. We are all trying to get the joy, happiness. What is the goal of life, human life? Happiness. Whatever we do, we do it for happiness. But then sometimes we do it so maximum excess, it becomes unhappy. The one person going on drinking, in the beginning he was getting joy. Then he went on drinking, 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 then afterwards he couldn't control himself. He fell down and it was a dirty place. And then someone else came and took him, put him in the cab and took him to his place. Like that he went. Is that joy? No. That's a, and all people were looking at him. Oh my God, that person is like this. So this is the way we start for enjoyment. Everything. But we should be careful that we are not going to end up ending with misery. So that consciousness, alertness, called religion. That alertness, I am here to enjoy, to be happy. How I can become happy? By controlling my senses. Somebody is talking with me and praising me, I am happy. Somebody I heard whispering against me, I am happy, they are talking about me. Though maybe they are criticizing, but talking about me. They are not ignoring me, just like Swami Vivekananda. The people, when they were criticizing Swami Vivekananda, Vivekananda's friends told, why you are not retaliating? We are not giving the answer. He said, forget about it, but look at it. Some people are praising me, some people are criticizing me, but no one can ignore me. That is the thing. So at least you, I am there in their minds. So I am happy. Let them criticize, but I am there. So this is the way if you think the life becomes so beautiful. You are not at all angry, ang angry and not at all uh, the dejected. You are always the same happy soul. And the person who was criticizing if he comes to you, uh, no problem. You are thinking in that way, now the thought has changed. So this is called Vedanta. When you are utilizing the Vedanta, the practical Vedanta, the Guru will be telling you this, be happy. And for the happiness you have to make your mind broad. Accept everything. Everything is going to change. One of our senior Swami, when I have forgotten that incident, what happened, then we were all sorry. Oh, the book fair. So we were, took some of our the publications and Ramakrishna Mission's contribution in the spiritual world the books, so many books we have, the Swamis they have written and we presented. So that was really, they did a great contribution. We took it to the local market to sell it. There was a fair was going on, book fair, very famous in Calcutta. 
but the first day we couldn't sell so we were thinking what will happen because we have already spent so much of money for uh, that uh, hiring that place and the taking the books over there and transportation now do we will lose that money if we can't sell the book so we were the young brahmacharians then the president swami ji came and told hey, what happened why all of you are sitting quiet <laughs> the the today we couldn't sell and we don't know only seven days fair the first days are like this second days are also like this and what will happen we are going to lose then he said when he was passing he was not standing he just heard and he was passing and he com commented this shall also pass that was a great teaching this shall also pass and you were thinking that unhappiness you cannot sell oh this will go happiness will come and when you are happy you thinking our oh, whole life will be happy no this shall also pass so be ha be very very conscious about it whatever is coming adjust with that and try to be happy this is the secret of life not that only philosophy that goes above the head what is the use of listening to the philosophy which goes above the head and in our life we are not utilizing that it is not helping us to be happy in our life so this the way he says and what is this brahman now we will conclude with this he says in the 15th verse 8th chapter o rama be always aware of the truth and what is that truth be always aware of the truth what is this truth then he says nistarango nistarango means without any movement ati gambhira extremely profound and sandra ananda sudha arnava arnava means with ocean it is the main source of joy madhurya it is beauty not that you have to close your eyes and not talking with anyone and somehow the sometimes some monks they do they'll be segregating from ebra no no i cannot look at this people that people some are there we are not going to look at the women and the women are there we are not going to look at the male so all these sorts of different type of things there but it is not madhurya madhurya is all beauty inside the mind when you are and externally behave just normally so madhurya ekarasa aadhara ekarasa means again it is only the one and not two and that is the source ek eva sarvata asti and that one is in everything that one is in everything so this is the way always it goes i was traveling from here to india i think 4 5 years before the one lady elderly lady and she was having difficulty to walk and she came and somehow sat by my side and after the flight took off and we started talking and she was telling the do you have food because she was not knowing that food will come the the cruise will give us a food. do you have food if you don't have then i am having i can share with you <laughs> okay just like the grandmother so because she was not knowing the, the in the plane they will give us the food and the, are you traveling alone is there anybody who will be there at the port to receive you if not my son is coming to receive me i can help <laughs> don't worry about me so much of affection so much of love just grandmother likely like so afterwards she told that uh, i was wearing the the pant and shirt the european dress so she couldn't recognize me so what do you do are you a doctor i told her i am a short of a doctor you know i treat the minds of people but i am not that way doctor i am just joking with her then she told oh that is good and if you come to karachi please treat us also then i came to know that she is from pakistan and india pakistan you know that is all the time logare and i was going to india and she is going to pakistan and she was a muslim lady and i told oh acha but afterwards i felt look at it she was just like any grandmother and she was careful about me because i am traveling alone she was thinking the food she is thinking who will receive me 
just like that the affection the love is always there it is not the religion it is not the language it is not the place it is love that love is always there within and that is called madhurya madhurya that uh, the sanskrit word means it is the beauty beauty doesn't mean the physical beauty beauty doesn't mean any other thing beauty to understand the love one who is loving me i should understand that love too otherwise a baby when i am asking him to come the mother sometimes or the aunties the baby won't come because it wants to play but you'll be looking back and see whether the mother is there or not if the mother is not sitting it is very difficult for the baby the where that the baby knows so sometimes you will turn back and see the mother is there then you will play the mother knows the baby loves me though not coming to me this moment but he loves me the so understanding in this way called madhurya madhurya is beauty and that beauty is nothing but love and that love should not have attachment when i always feel or oh, this i should grab this is mine i should hold then comes the problem otherwise only this beauty at ekarasa aadhar and this brahman we are talking about that is the source of all beauty all happiness all joy eka eva sarvatra asti that joy is present everywhere look at that elderly muslim lady she was not knowing me i was not knowing her but the affection that love that was there in her heart it was there and maybe i have not seen my grandmother maybe my grandmother would have loved me in the same way too so that is the it is present everywhere eka eva that is one what is that one love love without any attachment and it is present everywhere friends this truth is this that the consciousness is everywhere and our guru vashishta he is teaching his disciples sri ramachandra this entire visible universe that you see this nothing but that brahman which is consciousness and the expression of that consciousness is through love without attachment thank you very much what is uh, this group is asking how can one attain ultimate happiness in samsara in samsara if you say it is difficult to get the ultimate happiness because samsara the word sanskrit word samsara means constantly changing that everything that is changing is called samsara and now what is that change is there if i love something and it changes is very difficult to get that joy that love in that because it is changing the nature is changing that if you turn the thing towards god who is never changing then you get that inside the samsara inside the household inside the family if you think that god is residing in the heart of my mother my father my wife my husband my children my friends my neighbors all around the same god then staying in the samsara also you are enjoying the supreme bliss supreme joy okay so thank you friends and let us say shanti three times and do you have any question over here okay i'm happy that you don't have <laughs> okay acha o shanti 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 hi hari hi om tat sat Om peace 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 unto all